We're going to look at this situation where we've got a number of brands, in this case 10 brands, and each brand has been rated in terms of their similarity with each other brand by an individual in a survey. Now the data we have here in this lower triangular matrix indicates those similarity ratings. Higher ratings in this instance indicate higher levels of similarity. So thus we can see brand 3 and brand 2 have been rated as most similar, whereas brands like brand 7 and brand 1 very dissimilar. Now the idea behind multi-dimensional scaling is to project these brands or objects onto a map, preferably two or three dimensional, whereby they are plotted as points and the interpoint distance should reflect the perceived similarity as indicated by the respondent. Thus brands that are perceived to be similar in the input matrix should be located close to each other in a Euclidean two-dimensional space. Likewise brands that are far apart should be far apart on the map. So we note firstly the, in the nature of the input format is in the form of a lower triangular matrix. In this instance here we're starting off with brand 1 labeled as such up to brand 10 and we leave the first entry blank and indeed all the diagonal and upper diagonal entries blank and enter the similarities like this. No need to enter them above here because they're symmetric. So the data input is quite simple. Just record the similarities of the, in this case, 45 pairs, 10 C2 pairs. Now to invoke the multidimensional scaling algorithm we're going to go to analyze and we go down to scale and there are a number of options and we go to proc scale and option. Now as usual we input our decisions here in terms of the menu of, of, um, of points here. So the first instance the data format here are already proximities. We've got a single source. You might have multiple sources stacked upon each other as matrices and in this instance we just click to define and we put the brands, in this case brands 1 to brand 10, into the box of proximities and we can then invoke the other dialog boxes and make our decisions about the output we desire. So in this instance I'm putting these brands in here and going with the model decision we have data that is at an ordinal level so they are meaningful in an ordinal sense and we're going to invoke or use ordinal uh, or non-metric multidimensional scaling. So we click ordinal here and to give greater flexibility in terms of the configuration and a better fit as it were we allow tied observations to be untied in the projected plot. Now we've got the shape here as a lower triangular matrix. The proximity entries here are actually similarities so higher values indicate higher levels of similarity. If it was the reverse we'd obviously leave it as such but here change it as similarities. Now we can have various dimensions, 2 up to 1 less than the number of objects, which is 10 minus 1, 9 objects. Now we're only really interested in 2 or 3 dimensions, so I'm going to leave it at the minimum and maximum of 2, and look at the 2 dimensional plot and output. Uh, we're not going to use any restrictions, so we will ignore that box, and we will look at the options. Now the options here allow you to specify different initial configurations, varying from simplex, torvison, and so on. Now let's run with Torgerson, an early uh, author in this area, and in terms of the iteration criteria, the algorithm is going to try to minimize a quantity called stress. A smaller stress value indicates a better fit. The smallest value attainable is a value of zero. So we have a range of stopping criteria. We can allow it to achieve a minimum stress and at which stage it will stop, or achieve a maximum number of iterations, in which case it stops, or until the improvement is so small as to not warrant any further um, iterations. Uh, we can tick use relaxed updates, basically this speeds up the algorithm and uh, in the interest of getting to the solution faster. Moving on to the plots which is primarily of interest to us, we're going to look at the plots in the common space or the two-dimensional Euclidean space and we have various plots here that will help us diagnose a fit in terms of the original data versus transformed proximities as per class notes. In terms of the output, we have display outputs and some output to files if we wish. We're not going to bother in this instance with any files, so we'll just look at the display and we can copy and paste and discuss this as needs be. So we can look at the iteration history, the stress decomposition, and basically any of these boxes that can be ticked, we'll, we, we will make use of that. So we've made our decisions, we've got our output, and we're going to now uh, click OK to get the output. Now in this instance you get a quick summary of the data input and it will give us some of the initial information. Firstly in the form of a reminder that there were 10 cases, so there's 45 pairs that were judged in terms of their similarity. 
and here's that actual input data for reference, discussion, or copying and pasting to a report. Now we can refer to this when we're looking at the map down below and see, for example, are brands that are perceived to be similar? Are they located close to each other? For instance, brand two and brand three, and likewise brand seven and brand one should be quite far apart on the map, and so on and so forth. We've got goodness of fit diagnostics. Following the iteration history, Proxcal tries to minimize the normalized raw stress. Smaller values are better. Starting off with a torus and start, it had an initial stress of 0.2, and after five iterations has reached a stopping criterion because the improvement is so small. So at which case it stops and reports the stress and other fit measures. So we've got a reported normalized raw stress as per here. We've got other variants of stress that other programs will print out as well. It has minimized this quantity and calculated these quantities, but in common all of them are indicating a good fit because the values are low. From the normalized raw stress, subtracting from one, we have another version called dispersion accounted for, and again we would seek that to be close to one, or getting its square root, this value should also be close to one. So these are all basically measures of how good a fit is. Misfit, as measured by stress, is uh, basically spread out over the various objects and we can see which ones contribute to most of the misfit. We've got the positions in terms of the final coordinates mentioned here and we can basically um, look at them visually or look at them in tabular form. We're most interested in looking at them visually and visually we can see here for example it's brand 2 and brand 3 as expected quite similar and if you recall brand 1 and brand 7 should be quite far apart and possibly brand 1 and brand 10 from the initial data. So what we can see here is this is a good representation of the original input data. We can see some brands as being quite similar to each other, yet quite different from other brands. Brand 10 being quite different from all brands it would seem. And one might gauge or attempt to gauge the interpretation of these dimensions based upon information we might have on the brands. For example, this could be a value, uh, cost, quality type dimension, whereas this could be something quite different. So based upon our contextual information or subjective or experiential information, one can gauge or attempt to gauge the dimensional constructs underpinning this similarity because if you recall the original data was attribute free we just asked a respondent to gauge a similarity without reference to any attributes the distances between the brands in euclidean terms are printed out here these are usually called the dijs and these would not necessarily be in the right rank order as the original input data the delta ij matrix of input proximities a set of quantities close to these, hopefully, that are in the right rank order, the so-called proximity or transform proximities, the hats, are in the right rank order, and hopefully, as I said, are close to these. And some plots to attest to that can be looked at. And we've got a couple of simple plots here. And in particular, looking at the distances versus the transformed values, in other words, the dijs versus the delta, I, the d hat ijs order, we would seek these values to be close to each other so that you would get a 45 degree line with very little scattering, indicating visually a very good fit in the output. So basically, what we have here is some graphical representation of the fit, seeking 45 degree line with little spread, monotone curve with not too much smoothing or flat portions, hopefully, uh, the transformed data and the interpoint distances on the map, and most usefully the map itself. But the validity of which is attested to by the fact that the stress values are small and so on and so forth. So basically what we've got here is we've got a simple mapping procedure which can supplement other or be a starting point for other analysis. So I'll stop at this point and we can refer to Casper.